Hey guys, welcome back. So in the last tutorial we learned about the basic types of variables and what kind of data they can hold. But how do we use that information to create common gameplay elements like player health, weapon ammo, and scoring systems? So let's start with something simple like player health. We're going to open up the third person character here, or whatever player character you guys are using at the moment. And we're going to come over here and we're going to create a variable. And we're going to call this health. And we're going to change its type from a boolean to a float. And we're going to compile this so that we can give this a default value. And we'll give it 100. And there you go. So now we have a variable inside our player character that says health. And we've given it a starting value of 100. As far as the computer is concerned, though, this health the computer doesn't know what health is. All it knows is that we told it to remember a number, 100.0. Because it's a float, it can have the extra decimal over there. As humans and as game players, we know that health has certain you know, characteristics to it. right? You can't have negative health. That means your player's dead. And usually, you can't have more than your maximum health. You know, otherwise, unless you have a power up or something like that, right? So we understand intuitively that health goes between 0 and 100 for our case right now. The computer doesn't know that. So it's up to us to tell the computer what health actually means. So if we click here and drag out into the event graph and say get health, what we're doing now is we're telling the computer get this number that's equal to 100. We call it health for us to understand and to make things easier. But as far as the computer's concerned, we just dragged out 100 into this event graph. And we're going to do something with it. So to make something very basic and simple so we can test this out, I'm going to right click here and we'll search for F key. And we'll hit Enter. So now we're going to do something to health every time I push the F key. And what we want to do is take some health away from the player. So this started out as 100. We're going to drag off of here and say minus. And we'll search for float minus float. Because we're going to subtract some number from this float. right? So we'll just say 10. Now this number right here, this output pin, would be equal to 90, right? Because 100 minus 10 is 90. But if I just hook this up and say we're going to print a string here, and this is going to tell us these print strings are very good for debugging and figuring out you know, what's going wrong in your code. This is going to tell us what the computer is doing or thinking. If I just take this and hook it up right into here, Every time I push F, we're going to take health, we're going to subtract 10, and it's going to tell us what the player's health is. Now, if I hit Compile and Save, minimize this, and hit Play, don't worry about this health bar up at the top. It's from something different. Now, when I hit F, you see it prints 90 to the screen. I hit F again, it still says 90. 90, 90, 90, 90. Now, if this was an enemy attacking me, something would be wrong, right? If every time they attacked me, I went down to 90 points but never got below 90. So what do we do wrong in here? The computer doesn't know that when we say health minus 10, you know, if something attacks us, that we actually mean take the health, subtract 10, and have this be the new value of health. All the computer reads every time we go through this, is say every time you push F, take health, which is 100. So take 100, subtract 10, and tell me what that is. The computer's doing basic math right here every time you push F. It's going 100 minus 10 is 90. 100 minus 10 is 90. Obviously, that's not how health works. So what are we forgetting? We're forgetting to tell the computer that it needs to remember what the new value of health is. So the way you do that is by saying you need to set the health. So we're going to drag health out here again. But instead of getting the health value, which will pull in another 100, we want to say set health. So now you can see that this looks a little bit different. 
we'll delete this here. This is a set value, right? That means that we can change the value of health by using this. And that's what we want to do. So we want to put this into the set health. And then we're going to hook this up to the F and this up to the print string. And then we'll tell the computer to print out what the new value of health is. So what this is going to do is it's going to take our initial health, which is 100. It's going to subtract 10. And then it's going to set it. And by doing this, the computer is going to remember what the new value is, which will be 90. So the next time we push F, when it gets health, it's not going to be 100 anymore because we changed it the first time we pushed health right here with the set. So now it's going to be 90 minus 10. And then we're going to set it again and print this out. So if we compile and save, this will work a lot more like what we expect health to do. So I push F, we're down to 90, push it again, 80, 70, 60, 50, 40, 30, 20, 10, 0, up, and now we're in some negative numbers. So what's going on there? You would think that when you hit 0, the computer should know that you know, your player's dead. This is the health. Health is at zero. That's not a, you know, viable player. Again, the computer only knows health as a float variable, right? And floats can be negative. So it's up to us to tell the computer that when you hit zero, that means the player is dead. And player death means you lose the game, right? So if we right click here and search for quit, See, we have this thing that says quit game. And specific player, we're going to say get controller. You guys don't have to worry about this right now. Um, this is just to show you guys an example. So what we're going to do is when we hit zero, we want to quit the game. That makes sense. So right after we set the health, we're going to have to check what the value is. And we're going to need to do this every time the health value changes. So what we're going to do is say equal, and you can search for this. You can do equal float or less than or equal to, whatever you guys want. We'll just say equals. And you see it just comes in as 0, and we're going to leave it at 0. And this red over here, if you guys remember from the other tutorial, this means we're going to, this is a Boolean value. So this is either true or false. Is our health equal to 0 or no? So what we want to do with that is we're going to drag off and search for branch. And now you see this is where um, branch nodes kind of come in, that if it's true, right, if our health is equal to 0, what do we want to do? We want to quit. Does that mean our player our player's dead? But if it's false, we want to keep playing the game, right? So we'll hook this up here. And if it's false, we just want to print what our health is. Make sense? So let's test this out. We'll compile and save, and we'll hit play. So now when I hit the F key, you see our health is going down, and it lets us still play. And now I hit it again, and you see we've quit. So from this little thing right here, we've just set up a basic health system, right? And we started with a variable that was 100. And we put in the logic to tell the computer how to take this variable that's 100 and make it function as you know we consider health, right? So subtract, set it again, remember what the new value is, and make sure you're not at 0 or less. And if you are, quit. That's all great, except the player is never going to know about any of this stuff, right? So if you have an enemy in your level and he's, you know, hitting the F key, whatever, and taking away health from your player, this is all going to run in the background, and your player is not going to know, and then all of a sudden they're just going to die, which that wouldn't be very fun. People kind of want to know where their health is at. And that is where 
we have to figure out how to get this information and what's running in the background here for the player to be able to see. Now, if you guys noticed when I hit play, you see I actually have a health bar here and it says 100. This is from another health bar that I created. And this is what we're going to go over in the next tutorial is how to make a widget and how to display that kind of information that we just created here, um, these variables, anything that we're putting over here, how we're going to get the player to actually be able to see this stuff so that they can understand the representation of what is going on behind the scenes. All right, guys, I hope that was helpful. And if it was, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel and stay tuned for more tutorials. All right, see you guys later.